hello viewers uh, we are from the orthopedic team of medicover hospital in high tech city hyderabad so we are going to have a small uh, conversation about uh, robotic uh, total knee replacement and its role in the management of uh, joint pains and uh, what are the benefits and are there any uh, uh, side effects of doing a, to a robotic total knee replacement today we have one of the eminent orthopedic surgeons in the country dr krishnakiran with us and uh, we have started doing the robotic total knee replacement in medicover hospital so we'll just have a brief chat about this robotic uh, total knee replacement what are the uh, intricacies of this uh, surgery and how the patient is going to benefit with this hi tanshikar uh, thanks for agreeing to be here you yourself are a very eminent orthopedic surgeon with uh, more than 10 years experience in uk and we're glad to have you in our team uh so this uh, robotic joint replacement surgery has taken on in a big way across the world and uh, i'm glad to say that our center is also one of the uh, centers of excellence for robotic knee and partial knee replacement surgeries and we've already performed more than 50 operations in the last couple of months using the robotic assisted technology and uh, contrary to what normal uh, people think or lay people think that there will be a robot doing the surgery and the surgeon will probably be sleeping on the couch or sitting in front of a computer uh, the robotic surgery as we have or we do at this point in time in orthopedic surgery is based out of haptic feedback it's a semi -auto automatic robo it's not a fully automatic robo so there are soft issues involved when we do any surgery so surgeon is definitely part of the whole team but we actually have a robotic uh, handheld device so which provides haptic feedback during bone cuts and also we have a, a virtual reality based preoperative planning where we don't need to do a ct scan for the patient we just mock the models on table using uh, infrared trackers in the femur and tibia which is attached to an infrared camera so the individual patient's anatomy is morphed onto the uh, 3d based models which is a very intuitive technology the femur the tibia are morphed and you have preoperative planning windows which will help us optimize the soft tissue tension in that patient so unlike what is contrarily uh, what is believed uh, popularly that there will be some robo coming there and doing the surgery it's actually a robotic handheld device and one must remember that the uh, computer in 1990 when it came occupied an entire room and now we have small Uh, very small handheld devices which actually are doing the function so that's similar here so we have a robotic handheld device which makes sure that the bone cuts are extremely precise that sounds very exciting and uh, i'm really intrigued to know about uh, this robotic total knee replacement uh, you yourself have had a vast experience in doing uh, computer navigation surgery and uh, obviously the patients have had excellent outcomes in your hands how different is this robotic surgery as compared to a computer navigation surgery that's also a very interesting question so i myself had a lot of reservations whether we should uh, uh, take it up uh, uh, the robotic surgery having been doing a uh, cast for the last 10 years so almost 10000 surgeries not many problems as such and then patients are really happy the um, uh, but i just took the leap uh, after attending a few meetings and then having some hands on on the device and then the main difference i find between cas and robotics is that the robotic is an execution tool cas is a planning tool mm -hmm. and the robotics as we have now right now can give us information about the gaps throughout the range of motion while cas will give you at 0 degrees and 90 degrees it cannot accurately predict what happens through the range of motion although i guess some of the uh, modern navigation tools do have this option but i also have doubts about the accuracy uh, difference between cas and robotics the robotics will give you everything that cas can give but you can also execute that plan to perfection using the robotic handheld device and so it eliminates the saw blade related uh, errors the errors which are related because of sclerotic bone or something like that and you must be aware that the saw blade can have a an error of to up to 8 to 10 degrees during execution sure and then if you actually make that error what to do with that error so the computer doesn't uh, cas doesn't help us with a rectification of any error but in robotics even if there is some error with something which has happened or at the end of the surgery you're not how happy you can always go back rectify the thing to 
a millimeter precision and i think the error of a robotic surgery is half a degree which is you know phenomenal because human eye as you and i know can recognize up to 10 degrees plus or minus yes. and we know that if it is plus or minus 3 the overall alignment then the failure risk is higher that's really nice to know that we at last uh, have some device which increases the accuracy of performing the surgery so that would be uh, in the interest of the patient and uh, obviously beneficial to the patient to improve the uh, longevity of the implants but uh, ha for a lay person uh, doing a robotic surgery is it go is the implant going to be any different to what uh, what uh, normal conventional total knee replacement or uh, uh, a computer navigated total knee replacement is will that have any bearing on the outcome because as a lay person uh, they would be interested to know will the surgery be any different in terms of exposure in terms of the duration of the surgery and in terms of uh, the recovery period is it going to be any different as compared to a conventional total knee replacement so that's again a very pertinent and valid point is there really going to be much difference with this half or one degree which we achieve for the patient and uh, an experienced surgeon with uh, computer navigation or even conventional technique if you do it properly will have good results for a long period of time so that's a very very valid point is it worth the money is worth the effort and the time uh, so what we see across the world nowadays is that most of the innovations are driven by artificial intelligence and robotics that's where it's going to go and we don't not only have surgeons who are experienced for performing the operation but if you look at the market in india and us a lot of these operations are actually being performed by surgeons who do less than 30 operations a year yes so the error for a surgeon who is the low volume is minimized if you use technology uh, for the thing and can you imagine a pilot looking at where he's going and not using a, a, a computer assisted uh, technology for the flight path and also we have the gps system we have the ola uber we have all these uh, technologies so if we have the right technology and in the right hands it must be used so if we have available technology to minimize error in a given patient you must bring your complication rate your error to zero and we have seen that if we use technology in a proper way it is definitely going to be beneficial for the patient because you can now create a patient specific customized joint replacement which which is good for that individual patient yes the implant will not change but the way we position the implant, the rotation of the components, yes. the amount of bone that is removed and the amount of soft tissue releases are much lesser with robotic assisted procedures because we are now trying to replicate the normal knee kinematics using this uh, uh, technology yeah. and that you can do to a lot of accuracy and this is especially true for partial knee replacements where we have correctable deformities and it's typically a bony procedure and you can execute the procedure to the last millimeter very accurately and replicate the mechanical access to the last degree of what you want very very accurately so although the implant doesn't differ the way we do the surgery the amount of soft tissue release which we do and the way we remove the bone and put the implant in is completely different to conventional technique and in our early experience we do find that the patients recover relatively faster and we hope that this lasts for a long period of time uh, that's actually a very encouraging thing uh, for the uh, uh, common man to know that uh, you know using a robotic uh, uh, method for doing a total knee replacement is not only beneficial in terms of improving the accuracy and longevity of the prosthesis but the recovery is much quicker because the amount of soft tissue dissection or the amount of uh, error which can be uh, which can be possible even with uh, uh, an experienced surgeon is significantly minimized with a robotic total knee replacement so it it certainly would help the patient in uh, faster recovery and uh, obviously increasing the accuracy having said that and you have touched about the cost so is the cost of a robotic total knee replacement uh, going to be any different to your other total knee replacements either a conventional or a uh, computer assisted navigation surgery so right so uh, any new technology will have uh, cost involved and for robotics specifically this relates to the disposables which are used for the individual procedure 
and we need to use these uh, trackers which are uh, infrared trackers we have pins and also the robotic device handheld device which requires a burr to remove the bone so this uh, on an average costs around 25 30000 rupees to the patient for a single knee replacement but having said that uh, we must take the analogy of a flight so we have uh, maybe a 1 lakh flights taking off and landing every day yes and in generally in surgery it's accepted that a 1% complication rate is acceptable yes. and worldwide we have roughly around 1 lakh joint replacements being performed every day and if you just take 1% of that 1 lakh it's going to be a significant number so can we accept a uh, 100 or a 1000 flight, flight crashes every day. So, the role of technology is akin to this to minimize errors related to the surgery which can be done using this technology so that that small proportion of patients for whom it's a 100% failure is further brought down. Whether the technology delivers, brings it down to zero is for anybody to uh, answer. It's difficult to answer at this point in time, but definitely holds promise and potential for the future. I think that's quite heartening to know that the, the cost difference is not that much as compared to the overall benefit the patient is going to get yes, from a robotic uh, total knee replacement. As we all know that with the modern implants and with the modern techniques, the survivorship of a total knee replacement is around 15 to 20 years. And I'm pretty confident that with this technology, the survivorship is going to only increase and uh, if you look at the overall benefit the patient is going to get in terms of the longevity of the prosthesis I think uh, the cost difference currently is quite minimal and uh, if uh, if this gets widely accepted over the next few years there is a every possibility that the companies would bring down the cost of these implants and uh, in the future there's a chance that you know the cost difference may not be as much and uh, there's a possibility that it can be widely accepted uh, in your experience what do you think is the role of robotics in orthopedics and like what surgeries are possible with this technology uh, robotics is not new to orthopedics it's been around for almost 30 years now if not more and it's gone a full circle like uh, with the uh, earlier generation robodoc which was a fully automatic uh, uh, robo which was doing procedures on its own of course under the guidance of a surgeon but it was executing things and uh, that was not probably a good idea at that point in time and it was ahead of its time so it didn't take off but now with improvements in the uh, uh, biotechnology and also the uh, ability to analyze data virtual reality space and then integrating all these platforms for the uh, patient use we will not be surprised if we have a virtual reality uh, yes. goggle which will help you do the surgery instead of having a big uh, screen or something which we have at this point in time showing us the data and that's where it's going or you could have glasses just like Tony Stark wears in uh, in one of these Avengers movies and uh, or Iron Man movies and is having this Edith which gives him all the data yes. which is needed and that's where the world is going and uh, uh, we as the people who are marching into the new uh, era, I think we cannot be immune to not adapt, adopting technology. So, unless we adopt technology, we may become irrelevant in the future. But we have to exercise caution to see exactly where this goes, whether the outcomes are um, actually as what has been projected and then how they do in the, the long term. But I see no harm in adopting technology carefully and then doing this uh, these surgeries which are actually dependent on precision for long term outcome as you know and that's what this offers us we should not forget our principles of uh, orthopedic surgery yes. and we should stick to those principles while doing this currently we have ability to do partial knee replacements knee replacements and soon we'll be able to do hip replacements using this uh, technology and we'll be able to execute the operation to the best of our ability for each patient and uh, that can be documented and given to the patient and time will tell whether this will you know be a passing fad or will take over but i feel that in the future, 
the combination of artificial intelligence with robotics is the future so you would have an x-ray which can be uploaded into the screen before you do the surgery and it will give you the complete plan based out of experience of so many hundreds or thousands of cases which have been performed and that's where it will have a really a telling impact on the lives of uh, people and that's not far off and as I see the engineering field is rapidly progressing yes. and the combination of these uh, bioinformatics combined with artificial intelligence with the ability to compress the size of the robotic device to you know uh, from being big robots to a handheld yes. device is what is a game changer and I think this technology is here to stay more and more surgeons will adopt it currently it's difficult because of the cost and as you rightly said once the technology uh, is adopted more and more the cost also will come down and the end user will definitely stand to benefit so overall it's a win-win for the patient yes. patient will get good uh, quality surgery for a marginally increased cost and it's a win-win for the surgeon because the surgeon has a real-time assistant who is intelligent yes. and who prevents complications from happening um, so even if you're a less experienced surgeon is definitely a fantastic tool to have that's really sounds exciting and uh, quite useful uh, to know about the role of robotics uh, as we all know that the technology has increased or uh, um, you know uh, gone through phases in the last few decades and especially in the last decade it has improved by leaps and bounds and uh, the robotic arthroplasty is no uh, is showing that showing us that the field of orthopedics is no different or we are not left behind in terms of adopting the technology uh, as you had rightly said unless we move along with the technology you will be left behind and you may become irrelevant but at the same time we should not uh, uh, you know forget about the basic principles of orthopedics yes. uh, soft tissue management and uh, the technology can only be as good as the surgeon so I'm sure there will be a learning curve for uh, uh, learning this robotic uh, technology but once the surgeon adopts this uh, I'm sure it improves the uh, accuracy and uh, the field of uh, medicine is all about being safe and uh, especially minimizing the complication rate and minimizing the inaccuracies of performing any procedure especially in arthroplasty it is very very relevant and uh, i am very confident that you know we, by adopting this technology the human error the element of human error can be minimized as you were earlier telling about the flying an aircraft wherein uh, there is no margin for error and uh, the same applies to surgical field as well so as long as you can reduce the inaccuracies and give a safe surgery I'm sure it's a win-win situation both for the patient and also for the surgeon because patient is happy as he had a, a fantastic surgery and the surgeon is happy because he's able to make the patient better and laugh and I'm sure this uh, technology will be here to stay and uh, hopefully the patients will understand the uh, you know the benefits of the surgery and uh, uh, i'm sure the patients will have more questions we are quite uh, you are happy to answer all of them and uh, we have been doing replacement surgeries for several years and uh, we are not left behind in terms of adopting the technology we have been in the forefront of uh, using computer assisted navigation in the twin cities and now we are again in the forefront of adopting this robotic technology. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishnagiran. That was a fantastic uh, interview. Thank you.